Hi, this is Robert with Cruise Bike, and today we're going to be assembling a 2020 Cruise Bike S40. To aid in our assembly, I have a feedback stand and also a Cruise Bike toolkit. If you don't have a toolkit, never fear, one is included in the box. Please take the time to watch the full video before you begin your assembly. That'll give you a sense for all the tools that you will need to complete the work. The first step is to open the box. Marvel at how gorgeous your new S40 is. We'll remove the seat. Also find the headrest cushion and the seat pad, the parts box, and also your little cruise bike welcome manual, which I highly recommend taking some time and thoroughly reading. It's a good read. Make yourself familiar with it. Once everything's out, the bike and frame will pull right out of the box. You will notice a small square of foam. That's not packaging material per se. You can use that to cut a custom lumbar support. So make sure you save that. Here we have our tool kit. Grab yourself a little pair of snippers and start cutting away the zip ties that hold the wheels on and unpack everything and you'll be ready for assembly before you know it. A quick note about the wheels. When you remove the protector, Make sure that the protector comes off by itself. If by chance the entire cap comes off, as shown right here, just pull that cap off the protector and carefully put it back onto the wheel. Make sure you save those, they're good for shipping later. Now we'll open our parts box and in there we will find the seat extension. We will also find our chain and also a little handle looking thing. That's for the seat top. We'll get to that later. Also find a mirror, pedals, which are indicated left and right. If you look on the inside. Also find a spare derailleur hanger. Put that in your parts bin. Also find in the bag the quick link. Also a long bolt and a pulley. That is this option for the derailleur mast. And also you will find four bolts, four nuts, and two washers. Also locate the pivot bolt. Make sure you have three washers on it as shown in the picture here. The first thing we're going to do is position our front end using our five millimeter Allen wrench out of our J Cool tool. We're going to loosen the boom clamp, which is the clamp up front. We're gonna loosen it just enough so that we can pivot the handlebars. Now there's only one way this goes. You might have to rotate the front end to make sure all of the cables are on the bottom underneath. Once you have that into position, we will rest it up against the top of the fork of the pivot clamp. We will attach the lower stays to the fork where they kind of snap into place there. And once we have that held into place, we will put our pivot clamp, I highly recommend using a little grease, with two washers on the sleeve side. We're gonna put that through the pivot clamp. Kind of position that through there. And then the bolt side, we will have one washer. So note, all of the washers go on the outside two washers on the sleeve side and one washer on the bolt side. Once we have that initially threaded in there, we will use two five millimeter Allens, the regular one and the one we assemble from our tool. And we're just gonna give that a little snug for now. And then we're gonna fix our cables. Now locate a three millimeter Allen and we're gonna loosen the Perez clamp. So when we loosen it, it moves it all the way down and then we can slide our headrest in. We're just gonna get that in there just kind of preliminarily and tighten the Perez clamp. Note, it only needs to be tight enough to prevent the tubes from sliding. Do not over tighten the clamp. All right, let's move on to the seat. we are locate two of the long bolts and two of the flat washers. And we will also locate our seat extension. For the seat extension, put a washer over each of the bolts. We 
these are also bolts I recommend putting a little bit of grease on. It makes them easier to avoid locking the nylock nuts. And we'll insert those bolts through the seat extension. And then we will put the seat extension on the front of the seat through the mount holes on the front of the seat. We will hold that in place just like that and then we will locate the lower mounts on the frame and put the seat right on there. Try to keep it the velcro away until we get our nuts just started. Then we can line up the rest of the seat making sure the holes are centered over the Perez clamp right there. That way we can access those later. We'll take our little bracket and we'll locate the holes and put it right around the frame, just like that. Then we'll use the remaining two bolts. Again, I recommend lightly greasing these. We will tighten those down. They do not need to be over tightened. Just tighten them down until you can tell that the Velcro has compressed a little bit to keep things from rattling. Then we will use our eight millimeter nut driver and our three millimeter Allen. I like to put the seat extension out about three quarters. Then we will tighten these nuts down, making sure they're nice and secure to keep the front in place. You will probably have two leftover nylock nuts. Just throw those in the spare parts bin. Now we'll locate our front wheel skewer. It's the long one, has no springs. No springs are needed. We'll take the cap off, have it ready. And we'll grab our front wheel. Now I like to grab the front of the cruise bike right by the pivot clamp. It'll keep everything secure. Nice and easy to balance holding it by that particular part of the boom and slider. We'll take the fork protector out. We have left that in previously. And we'll simply roll the front wheel up underneath and into the front dropouts just like that. Get it nice in there. Once we have that in place, we can take our skewer. We're gonna put it about three quarters of the way through because we still have to put the front derailleur hanger in between the chainstay and the fork, which is the next step. If you are assembling by yourself, this is where I highly recommend our feedback stand. It will keep the bike nice and upright without fear of it falling over. Now to put the front derailleur in, we're going to locate the domed side. It only goes in one way. The concave domed side goes towards the fork and then the rest of it sits between the tabs on the chainstay. So we're gonna slide that in between the chainstay and the fork, making sure that it is resting between the tabs Everything is nice and flush. And then we can push the skewer all the way through and put the cap on and tighten the front wheel. When you tighten the quick release, it will compress the front derailleur hanger into the chainstay, so it will be nice and secure. Just like a regular wheel, we wanna use a palm pressure to tighten that down. Everything's nice and secure. Now that we have the front wheel installed, we can install the rear. We're gonna take the cap off and the spring. Note this wheel has springs, just like any ordinary road bike wheel to center the quick release. We're gonna put the quick release on loosely. We're gonna lift up the back end, remove the dropout protector. I'm gonna roll that rear wheel right in, make sure the rotor goes between the pads and drop that wheel right into the dropouts and tighten the rear skewer. Now let's install our pedals. We will locate our left and right pedal. Again, each one will have a little L or R molded on the inside. We will use a six millimeter Allen wrench Put a pedal washer on each. Again, I recommend putting grease on the threads on these. And we will install the right pedal and the left pedal. Make sure they're nice and secure. Get 
easy peasy. And we want to make sure our handlebars are nice and level. So we're going to very carefully loosen the boom clamp and the pivot clamp just to get a preliminary setup here. And we will make sure our handlebars are nice and level. We'll give everything a little bit of a snug. Later, when you go to do a preliminary fitting, which we have other videos covering doing fit on the cruise bike S40 and other models, you will want to make sure the handlebars are nice and level. For now, for assembly, we're just going to get a preliminary adjustment and snug down the boom clamp and the pivot clamp, making sure everything stays nice and secure. Now we'll locate our chain, which is wrapped up, and we'll also want to keep handy our quick links. There's no need to grease the chain. It's nice and lubed from the factory. And we're gonna take the quick links, make sure we have those nice and handy for when we need those. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to pull the derailleur cage all the way forward. And we're going to push the small lock button and let the cage rest down on the stop. It's gonna make putting the chain on a lot easier. With that derailleur cage locked out, we're gonna take our chain and we're gonna drape it over the chain ring and down over the back of the cassette as shown here. Now the chain ring is a narrow wide style, meaning the teeth will only fit in it one way. Make sure the wide part of the gap is in the wide teeth and the narrow gap is in the narrow teeth. Now we'll route the chain around the back side of the cassette, making sure it's in the smallest gear. We're going to go over the very top jockey wheel and we're going to want to go right down between and miss the small tab that's right there, the little tab on the cage. We want to make sure the chain does not go over it. And then we'll go under the other wheel like that. Very important that the chain is only hitting the jockey wheels. If it's on top like this, that's incorrect. We want to make sure that the chain is underneath like that so we don't have any rubbing on the cage itself. I'll we'll locate our quick link. We'll insert one end through the one part of the chain, the other through the front. Lock those pieces in place. Now you might be able to pull the quick link completely closed. If not, we're going to unlock the cage very carefully. To unlock the cage, we're simply going to grab the top part, lift it up gently. That button will release and then we're going to let it Go down we don't want to let that snap back now we're going to very carefully rotate the chain backwards making sure it stays aligned on the chain ring teeth and we're going to do this until the quick link is at the very top of the chain and once the quick link is right there on the top we're going to push on the pedals and it will lock that quick link in place now we will install our seat pad velcro i like to take the seat pad and estimate roughly where the velcro is going to be on the seat itself and just know that once we line it up with the side of the seat and just go all the way up the side it's going to be in the perfect location so we'll mark there take kind of a mental note of where it is or mark it with a small sharpie possibly and remove the sticky back from the velcro and mount it to the seat Then we'll repeat the exact same process with the bottom seat Velcro. Once you have that installed, your seat pad is on. Now we can slide the headrest cover over the tubes. Simply slide it over with the Velcro and then insert the back end of the tube in the small pocket at the top. Again, when you do your final fit and adjustment, that headrest can be adjusted in and out, back and forth. And your Cruise Bike S40 is built and ready to go. Please note that you will want to also do a quick check of the brakes and shifting. Make sure everything is shifting okay and the brakes work okay. If you have a local bike shop to do the fine tune, that's highly recommended. Other than that, please see our other videos for fit and writing tips. If you have further questions, please email us at support at cruisebike.com. And thanks for watching and happy riding.